Uh, as many of you know, I am. Uh, we're doing this particular conversion, this house, fairly old house, uh, probably from the 60s. Uh, I were converted into a nine studio room house. Um, and I thought it makes sense to come and talk to you a little bit about this, right? You've heard me talk about compliance and how uh, the complications of making compliance uh, in existing properties and the challenges that you need to kind of account for. But I thought today I'll talk about this. What happens if you inherit something like this? What happens if you inherit a bit of a mess uh, like we have here with uh, zero threes and uh, all sorts of different things over there? You know, you can see over there we have, you know, a whole bunch of rubbish and here there's like a shack that is about to fall apart. You know, all of those things. What do you do when you find that? Um, well, I've been saying before, you probably heard in some of my other videos, that you need to bring the property to complete compliance. And pools are one of those areas where compliance has changed significantly over the last um, decade or two. You know, we used to be able to have pools and run into them. And uh, unfortunately, that led to, uh, to you know, people drowning and, uh, you know, a, a number of uh, kind of unsafe practices uh, that then that obviously regulated. And now, um, Having a pool, it's almost, almost uh, a completely different uh, compliance exercise in terms of having pool fences and, and you know, minimum height and all sorts of things. Now, this house is fairly, fairly old. You can tell, right, there's like, the, you can see the birdcage over there. You can see the shack kind of almost falling apart. Now, we're literally not interested in any of this stuff. However... Uh, we won't necessarily get compliance for someone to live in this house um, unless we can address all of those things. And that's why it's very, very important that you work with somebody uh, um, that has the skills to be able to address those compliance issues and also to be able to find creative ways of solving them. Uh, I'll tell you in a second what we're doing here. Uh, but uh, very, very often the people who are looking at this, they go, oh, ah, yeah, yeah, we need to do this and we need to be uh, we need to be able to uh, kind of bring the fence up and, you know, make sure that the machines for the pool are kind of working properly and all of those things. In a place like this, that will cost tens of thousands of dollars. Um, so we have decided not to do that. We have decided to do something completely different here, uh, which we will do uh, in a couple of months. But uh, again, not much point in actually um, um, investing a huge amount of this because as fun as that probably will be for the people, the residents of this particular Romy house, we have no intention of providing uh, a swimming pool as part of our service. So what are we going to do here? And I'm going to try to swivel around, see if this actually works with me for a second. Uh, but the single angels there, you can tell, there you go. Uh, so just here in front of me is a pool that you just saw before, just behind me is a driveway. And just where I'm standing now is where the disabled car spot is going to be. There's a carport here, very fairly open carport, uh, but a carport nevertheless. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to level up all this stuff uh, just uh, just behind me over here, right? Um, we're going to get rid of that pool, and we're then going to create a fair bit of landscaping based on crash rock, mulch, and a couple of other things. Very, very low cost, very, very, very low maintenance. Because what we realize is, you know, when the pool, we get rid of the pool. And if we get rid of the pool, then all those compliance issues go away. Uh, and when those compliance issues go away, then suddenly we don't need to do uh, any of that uh, kind of extra stuff. So now we're in a lucky position that we know what cost of construction look like. Uh, and we know what's compliant and what's not. So we were able to advise our client in this particular instance uh, what was kind of the best thing to do, what was uh, the easiest way uh, to make these compliance. And who knows, there might be one or two or three or five extra car parks at the back there one day. Uh, we won't do it necessarily now, uh, but the option is always open there. Anyway, I thought, very, very simple thing, but I thought it will be worth bringing it to your attention uh, so that way you don't become one of those statistics of someone who started a project thinking uh, that it was going to be an easy conversion, 10 or 20 grand, get it all done and start getting cash flow, and then unfortunately realizes 
uh, the complexity of uh, the system and the complexity of uh, what doing a project like this involves, which sometimes is not super obvious uh, when you're considering or when you're studying it. If you have any other questions, if you have you ever faced a, a challenge with a pool like this in a construction project or in a conversion project, uh, I know some of you uh, have indeed um, retained the pools and maintained the pools. Uh, uh, but if you have any other questions, if you have any other comments, feel free to post them below. I read every single comment that you guys put in and I'll be answering many of those uh, directly. Uh, and if not, then I'll see you in a future video. Uh, talk to you many of you soon.